Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video we're going to take a look at all the Copilot Studio announcements that were made at the 2024 Power Platform Community Conference in Las Vegas. Now, the conference was filled and jam-packed with a whole bunch of Power Platform related new features and enhancements, but in this video I'm going to focus specifically on Copilot Studio and I attended as many of those sessions as I could. In fact, one of those sessions was co-presented with Lisa Crosby, where Lisa and I actually did a well-attended session. And I want to give a special thank you for Lisa. Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover not only about the new features, but also some enhancements, some new terminology, and an important name change that's going to happen. So stick around, this is very, very important. But first, here's my intro video. So this was the third conference and it truly is the largest Power Platform conference on the American side of this globe. And it was well attended because there were at least 6,000 people over here and not just the speakers but also the attendees were from around the globe. Therefore it was really well attended. Now the fourth conference is also announced but I'll talk about that in a minute. What I'm going to focus over here is specifically the Copilot Studio announcements. But first let's talk about the name change. So as of September 16th of 2024, the name which we call as Copilot Studio Custom Copilots, well that's now going to be called as Agents. Also, the Microsoft 365 Copilot Extensions, that's going to be called as Copilot Extensions. So there is that change because remember once upon a time we used to call them as chatbots, but that chatbots became as copilots. Well, now these copilots are going to be called as agents. And this is the official terminology. And like I show in the slide over here, the name change actually took effect September 16th of 2024. So that was the first immediate thing I noticed right at the end of the keynote was this name change. All right, so let's focus on the new terminology. And this is it. It's called the orchestrator. And you might have even started to notice this terminology on some of the articles which actually came out in August. I've put those links down in the description if you're interested. But the orchestrator is literally what lets your custom copilot answer user queries using the relevant questions, topics, and answers. This is basically the generative AI, which is now the generative orchestration that enables more natural conversations by filling in inputs using details from the conversation history. So you will start to hear this terminology called as the orchestrator, and you will hear it such that let the co-pilot studio use the orchestrator to go ahead and get you the best answer based on the conversation you're having. This is the type of terminology that you will use, and in the back end, it still goes ahead and uses the RAG model to get you that information. So the concept is still the same, but this is the new terminology called Orchestrator. Now, the must attend session to learn as much about Orchestrator as possible was the one by Gary Preddy, because Gary is the principal product manager of that section of Copilot Studio, and he went through it step by step. For example, he started by actually talking how the classical interface works is when you go and actually have the topic and how the topic will go ahead and give you the information when you're having this conversation. This is literally how the classic design works using the utterance when the user is actually having the discussion using all these topics. However, the new design using the orchestrator and its generative reaction, this is it. In fact, as of September, this is the update. So as you can see, there is more automation that happens. Um, yes, there is still the same design of the topics um, and using the utterance, but now there is more automation built into it. The generative AI using the RAG model actually does go ahead and get you much more accurate answers using a combination of the topics, actions, and the knowledge all of which that you build it inside the Copilot Studio agent. So just to make sure that you and I are on the same page about the Copilot Studio agent, this is what it is. And it truly is what we used to call as the Copilot Studio Custom Copilot. It is still an experience with generative AI to assist humans with complex cognitive tasks, and it will go ahead and use the natural language, 
it will give you determination of guide and approve to the output and its value increases with complexity. So the overall concept is still the same as how you and I worked with the Copilot Studio building the custom Copilots. The name has changed, but there is so much more generative AI being built in the back end, and that is truly going to take it to the next level. In fact, in this documentation that you're familiar with, one of the things on the top right, that is leveraging the generative AI. Yes, it goes ahead and does everything else when it comes to building and publishing, analyzing and improving, but now you've got that generative AI directly plugged into it, and now you can go and start building some really smart agents with it. And these agents can directly be plugged into your Microsoft 365 Copilot as well. Because in the past we did the exact same thing, but now it's called as Copilot Agents. And this was a great overview that Jeff Tieper also gave in his section of the keynote, because these Copilot Agents can do a large level of complexity across a large bandwidth, which can be simple all the way up to advanced, making it completely autonomous. And you know, if Jeff Tieper is on the stage, he absolutely has to talk about the SharePoint roadmap. And this truly was one of the wow factors. So in this screenshot, right on the top right, you see that there is now create a co-pilot agent. So yes, in this document library, you can directly go ahead and create a co-pilot that leverages all the knowledge in these documents and directly go and present them inside your SharePoint site. And I plan to do much more detailed videos on these but this is what I liked. And some of the exciting things that I'm looking forward to is, is this directly plugged into SharePoint? Do we need to go and create any other authentication? Like how is this going to work? More information on that to come. But this was the big wow one for me. Like this new feature about Copilot agent directly plugged inside SharePoint right down to the library level, leveraging all the content you have in SharePoint. Now, one of the new features that really caught my attention, which was even demonstrated in the keynote, was the testing functionality of your agent, specifically in this new actions feature that is part of your Copilot Studio. So in the demo, they actually showed how when a flow was triggered specifically in the actions, what are the different steps that are going on if Power Automate flow was being used or if any other action such as the Outlook was used. In the middle, it is showing you real time all the actions with details if you've got a debug. And then extremely on the right is actually the conversation that you're having with the agent. So it really gives you good side-by-side -side information of all this conversation and all the activity that is having. In addition, you have the new history tab as well. And that history tab will show you all these interactions that are going on. But I couldn't help but notice that, hey, yes, this is the actions, but it looks so much like a power automate flow. So the first question that came up to my mind is, when do I use an actions in a Copilot studio versus creating a Cloudflow directly in Power Automate? So I took this information directly to the product group and here is some feedback that they gave me. So when it comes to the Copilot studio actions, Copilot lets the orchestrator decide what, when, and how to invoke the data. It handles the thinking on the back end. And it's also for very smaller limits. Example is to go ahead and answer simple questions if the user is asking the agent. Power Automate on the right hand side gives you full control of the process and it can even handle large data sets and large files. So don't be alarmed when you saw all that flow activity happening inside the actions in your Copilot Studio when you're building an agent. Don't be alarmed with it. Things are still the same. Yes, the orchestrator in the Copilot Studio does similar things, but you don't have a lot of control over there. While in Power Automate, you've got full control of the entire process, almost like it's a scripted thing step by step. So they are two completely different processes and do things in a separate way. Now, another session that I attended was the one by Henry James and Dwayne Robinson. And they really wowed me with all the enhancements that are coming specifically on the analytics roadmap. Because let's face it, a not a whole lot of updates was done on this analytics sites. Couple of things that frustrated me, even back in the Power Virtual Agent chatbot days, is that the analytics could sometimes take 24 or 36 hours to give me updated data. Well, that's not gonna be the case anymore. The data analytics first, which by the way, is going to be completely revised, completely made new, it will refresh faster too, sometimes as fast as four hours. So here was a really nice screenshot that they provided and even gave us some items on the roadmap. Performance improvements, new design like we just saw in the screenshot below, new knowledge matrix section, smart suggestions, and service health, themes, recommendations, and discovery. 
A lot of good is going to happen in this analytics. And let's face it, that needed some TLC. And it's been about four years ago since it hasn't been touched. So I welcome this. Also, there was another really good demonstration done by Henry James about Copilot Studio Kit. Now, the concept has been there. In fact, it was some of the neat features that the Power Platform CAT team has developed. And it truly is a comprehensive tool to go ahead and test your agents. But now there's going to be a lot more enhancements to it because there are different kinds of tests available. You can go ahead and do response matches, topic matches, attachments, which also includes the adaptive cards and making sure that the generative answers actually goes ahead and responds something close to the answers with giving good validation instructions. This level of testing you can also go ahead and use using Copilot Studio. So there's a lot of enhancements that's been done over here, not just from the back end, but also the front end. For example, in the past, if you wanted to go and get a history of the conversation, you only got that as a code. But now you can actually get it from the UI standpoint where you can actually see, hey, what was the agent's response versus what was the user's ask? You can see that from the UI way as well, not just a dull code in the back end, which was confusing. The UI also has had a huge facelift over there. Real, really nice things. This enhancement of Copilot Studio is going to be great. In fact, you already have it available, so you can go ahead and download that, set it up in your tenant and start to use it right now. There are some backend configurations that are required because let's face it, it uses all of these features, things such as Azure App Insights, AI Builder, the data is stored in Dataverse. So think of it as how you go ahead and create your center of excellence toolkit. You have to go ahead and configure and install that. Something similar for the Copilot Studio as well. It does need some configuration and the installation, both inside the Power Platform and with other services in the Microsoft side but I highly recommend you to start leveraging it because the outcome is truly productive. Also, they talked about some of the features that's coming up in the roadmap, aggregated APIs that are gonna be available, adaptive card galleries, multi-turn testing capabilities, which is, makes it much more step-by-step, -step, multiple back and forth interactions with the custom co-pilots, return tests in the context of a deployment pipeline, really, really neat functionality, these are all the coming soon features that they're going to go ahead and put in the Copilot Studio Kit. So keep an eye on them because once they are out, you will have to go ahead and update that Studio Kit. But all of it is going to be well worth your time. And finally, the announcement of the 2025 Power Platform Community College. Yep, they went and made that announcement as well right in the keynote. Year number four of this conference is going to be back in the same location at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, but the dates have changed a little bit. This year it was in September, next year it's going to be in October. In fact, at the end of the October. It's same place, same location, the date has slightly changed, and I personally look forward to attending that as well. So there you go. You've been informed about not only the new features and enhancements that are coming out, but the important changes, specifically some of the terminology it is no longer called as custom copilots, but it is called of agents. Now you know what the orchestrator is and how it actually uses the generative AI, and it will slowly be plugged into all of these other agents that you're gonna use, including the one in Microsoft 365. Also, some of these features you will already have available in your tenant in Copilot Studio. If you go in right now, you're more than likely going to see how you can create those actions. And remember that Copilot Studio agent is very specific because the generative AI using the orchestrator makes it for a very small case. It is not the same as how the cloud flows you can go and build with Power Automate, two completely separate things. Hopefully this video gets you excited and as always, keep using Copilot Studio building agents. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.